वेलकम बैक वी आर हेडिंग टूवर्ड्स इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ स्पेक्ट्राज नाउ वॉच द प्रीवियस वीडियोज फॉर द बेसिक्स ऑफ आई आर एन एम आर यू वी मास एवरी थिंग एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू गो फर्दर इन द स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपिक टेक्निक्स वेर वी गोइंग टू डिटरमाइन द इंडेक्स हाइड्रोजन डेफिशियंसी एंड देन वी आर गोइंग टू मेक सॉल्व सम स्पेक्ट्रा प्रॉब्लम्स फॉर assigning the structures i'll make a separate video on ihd and separate videos on interpretation of spectras okay so what is ihd as the name suggests it is index hydrogen deficiency so it this gives you the number about the number of hydrogens deficient in a particular structure or in simple words it gives you the information about the number of multiple bonds or the rings present in the structure okay so multiple bonds as in the number of double bonds or the triple bonds so ihd is a count of how many molecules of h2 are needed to uh, needed to be added to the structure to obtain the corresponding saturated uh, or acyclic species okay so it gives you the count of multiple bonds or the rings and uh, for neutral molecules this should be a positive number because it is a exact number okay it should never be an integer and if you get such type of answer in integer or in point that means you have gone wrong somewhere okay and using this ihd we can deduce the structure of a particular molecule so before assigning a structure we always have to find out the ihd there is a formula and certain rules that you need to remember for while calculating ihd when a molecule has one double bond or one ring the ihd is taken as one or vice versa if you are calculating ihd and if you get the answer as one our conclusion will be what the molecule will be having either one double bond or the ring now whether it is having a double bond or the ring will be decided by the other spectroscopic data techniques that we have okay if the answer of ihd is 2 then it could have one triple bond okay now for example if you have a hydrocarbon for hydrocarbon there is a specific formula cxhy it goes like this ihd is equal to 2x plus 2 minus y upon 2 where x is the number of carbon atoms and y is the number of hydrogens so uh, i have made it bit a bit easy you can directly write it as 2c minus 2 minus h so while calculating c is consider the number of carbons h consider the number of hydrogens now there are if there are some hetero atoms present like oxygen sulfur halogen nitrogen what would be the formula so oxygen sulfur have no effect on ihd so you can simply stick to this formula if halogens are present consider them as hydrogen so if fluorine is present consider it as h while calculating the ihd if nitrogen is present uh consider it as ch and add it in the existing number of carbon and hydrogen and then calculate the ihd okay so let's study some examples right now suppose you have given a molecular formula c6h6 and now you want to calculate the ihd for this okay so what is the formula for ihd 2c uh, it's given over here so i'll directly write the answer so what is the formula 2 into 6 now hydrogens plus 2 okay minus how many hydrogens are there 6 and divided by Two. So what is the answer? This is twelve plus two, fourteen minus six uh, is eight divided by two is four. So IHD is coming out to be four. Now, as we saw further that if the answer there are see different possibilities. Okay, so if the answer is four, so what could be the possibilities? One IHD value one means one double bond, but the IHD value is four. That means there could be possibility of four double bonds. okay one double bond also represents ring so there could be possibility of rings also so it could be three double bonds and one ring i won't say four rings because the the number of carbons are very limited no it could be two double bond and one triple bond because for uh, if the ihd is two then it is considered as a, considered as one triple bond so it could be one triple bond and two double bond so there are n number of possibilities it could be another other possibilities also so the what it is will be concluded when you have other spectroscopic data like ir and nmr let's calculate for one with oxygen okay if oxygen is present neglect you don't have to consider that oxygen so simply apply it here 2 plus 2 minus 12 divided by Okay, so in this case, the IHD is coming out to be six to the twelve, twelve minus two, one, two divided by two, one. So it's coming out one. IHD one 
ISD is equal to 1, what could be the possibility? It could have one double bond, it could have one ring. Any one of this is possible. As I again, I'm again and again telling you, the, whether it is one double bond or one ring uh, will be provided when you have, a, have more information. Okay, let's do for C5H9. Uh, now, when I said when there is one nitrogen present, you have to consider it as CH and add it in this. So, now the total number of carbons are 6, 5 plus 1, 6 and total number of hydrogens that we are going to consider are 9 plus 1, 10. Now, you substitute over here 2, sorry, plus 2 minus 10 upon 2. Okay, so this is 2, uh, 12 to Mm, 6 twos are 12 plus 2 14 14 minus 10 is 4 divided by 2 it's 2 answer is 2 okay so now what are the possibilities if the IHT is 2 what are the different possibilities it could have two double bonds it could have one double bond plus one ring yes or no if it is 2 it could also have one triple bond right okay so these are the different possibilities that are uh, you know possible if you have if you are supposed to calculate only IHD. Now we'll take in one example where extra data is given and calculate the structure. Okay, okay, and calculate IHD and assign the structure. So molecular formula C4H8O uh, absorption at 1720 in IR. NMR signals are these. Okay, so let's go one by one. I've kept these values for your reference. First, let's calculate. Whenever you are assigning a structure, calculate IHD first. So 2 into 4 plus 2 minus 8. Now oxygen is there, no? So you have to neglect this. 2 4s are 8 minus 8 is 0. 2 upon 2, that is 1. So what is this? IHD is coming out to be 1. That means there are two possibilities. One double bond or one ring. Okay, or... Now we will see what exactly it should be. Extra information is given here is 1720 cm inverse is IR. IR gives you value of functional values you have to remember. Where is 1720? Look into here. It is here. So what is present? Carbonyl group is present. So 1720 means your compound is having a carbonyl group. Now if I am having a double bond over here, so my possibility of ring is ruled out. So, what am I having? Double bond. So, now it, double bond is assigned. If carbonyl group is present, either it could be a ketone or it could be an aldehyde because carbonyl group is present in both. So, let's see what it is. Next, you have NMR signals, right? And now you have a formula. Now, what we will do is, I generally do is, out of C4H8, you know that this is present. So, I will keep this aside. So, this is my one group which is assigned. Now, what is the formula left here? C3H8. Right? Now, I have to arrange these three hydrogens and three carbons and eight hydrogens for which I am going to use the information of NMR. Now, in NMR, quartet and triplet and singlet tells you the information of the neighboring proton. When I see a quartet, I come to know that the neighboring proton should be CH3. When I see a triplet, I should know that the neighboring is CH2. That means I know that these two are already present. So, my other groups which are present are what? CH3 and CH2. Okay. Now, they should be, uh, you know, uh, attached to each other. They should be adjacent to each other. Only then you will get a triplet and this will give you a quartet. Okay. Now, you subtract this from this formula. So, C2 are subtracted. So, only one carbon is left now. Five hydrogens are subtracted. Only three hydrogens are left. Now, this CH3 is there. So, this group is remaining. Now, I have to attach this group. Suppose I attach CH3 and CO. This makes no sense. So, this is not the possibility. Let's try out something else. Now, remember this CH3 which is present. So, this quartet is done this quartet okay it is 2.4 ppm this triplet is 1.0 ppm 0 uh, ppm and singlet is 2 ppm that means this should be my singlet indicating that there should be no neighboring proton so where is that is possible it is like this now you will say if i write a structure like this 
this also gives you a same formula this also we will give you a carbonyl compound at c20 this will give you a triplet this will give you a quartet but this thing will give you a triplet no but according to our nmr there is not a triplet there is a singlet so this is giving you a signet singlet so you can write possible structures and then match it with again the nmr or the values that are given and then assign the final structure you i have uh, used these values over here like just for your reference what could be but again you know because of the chemical shifts uh, because of shielding and deshielding these are never constant okay as uh, see ch3 you have got almost somewhere similar one because it is not attached to an electronegative atom but ch2 you have got downfield instead of 1.2 to 1.4 because of this electronegative oxygen which is present and this ch3 if you could observe you could should have got it at 0.7 and 1.3 but uh, that singlet is around 2 ppm okay again that is because of this electronegative atom watch the nmr video there are different videos a whole set one video which is covering everything and i have divided videos into parts so that It, the videos become short and you can study about a particular topic i'll be making more videos on interpretation of spectra okay so do watch those videos thank you